Hey, how's it going, y'all? Today we're going to be talking about how to host your own HTTP Git server on Synology NAS using Git EA and Docker. So Git EA is actually a fork of Gorgs, and it basically allows you to have your own HTTP Git server with very low resources and actually have a very nice web interface for managing projects. This is much better than just using SSH because it allows people to have a very clean interface into what is going on with the project. So Git EA provides a very lightweight, but still really solid user interface for looking at different projects. So this is their test server that we can check out right now. And if we go into Explorer, we can see all of the different repositories. And so you can see the different commits and it's a lot like GitHub. It even supports readme.md files to really get that nice visualization of what's going on in your project. And so Git EA is the perfect tool for a lot of smaller, even mid-sized development teams who don't need a ton of bells and whistles, who really just need version control with a clean web interface that allows everybody to see what's going on. Plus, it is so lightweight that you can run it within almost any Synology NAS that supports Docker containerization. All right, and so before I go into the install, I wanna talk about how you can remotely connect. This is for people who would like their developers to be able to push and pull commits from outside of the network that the Synology is on. And so really there are two ways to do this. The first and by far most secure is going to be to set up a VPN connection. I've got a tutorial on how to do this through DSM and it allows for all of your developers to just connect to this VPN and securely get back to the home network. That way they can push and pull with no problems whatsoever. The second way, which has some security vulnerabilities that you need to watch out for, is to actually open up Git EA to the internet. I would only do this if you really know what you're doing and are able to really lock it down, though it does come with some security holes. Though fundamentally, Git EA does have the framework enabled to be hosted on the internet. It's just if you're gonna do it, you've gotta do it very securely. And so if you do choose this path, you need to make sure to at least be using a proxy and that'll also help because you can have DSM handle your certificate and also act as if it's running natively on port 80 or 443. That way, people just don't have to type your custom Docker port whenever they want to actually get to the Git EA site or if they're doing a clone. And I've already got a tutorial on how to set up a reverse proxy on a Synology NAS. So I'll leave that in the description below. All right, and so now that that's over, let's go ahead and log into DSM and we're gonna go ahead and install Docker. So if you've not installed Docker before, I've got a tutorial that I'll also throw in the description and just go ahead and install it from the package center and just install it right here. But I've already got it, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And so right here, it is gonna run a little bit slow because I am on a virtual machine running this, but we can go ahead and go into registry and we're just gonna search for Git EA. And right here, just go ahead and download this one. And I've already gotten ahead and downloaded this one, but this is the official Git EA repository that Git EA actually publishes. And so Git EA is actually pretty awesome because while they're pushing all of their other formats, they actually also push a Docker container for everyone to use. And I've seen a lot more open source repositories doing this, and I think it's a great movement. Docker seems to be a great medium between virtualization and simply running a bunch of different applications on one machine. So once you've downloaded it, we're gonna go over to image. All right, and so now we just need to go ahead and click launch. And so first go ahead and give it a name. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into advanced settings. So you're gonna to wanna to enable auto restart. You could also set up a volume here in which to put all of your different repositories just in case anything happened to Git EA. However, that's a bit complex and I'll go ahead and leave that for another tutorial. Network, you don't really need to do anything. And now under port settings, you're going to want to set these up. Unfortunately, you cannot open up port 22 on Docker because the host has already taken that up. So we're, instead we're going to do 22 is zero. And for port 3000, we're going to do port 3000. This way, these ports do not just change on you randomly. So port 22 is going to be used for SSH pulls and port 3000 is going to be used both for the web interface and for the actual HTTP Git pulls. And so to get to our Git server, we're going to type in the IP address or host name of this Synology 
colon 3000 in our web browser. If you're using reverse proxy though, you can set these up as port 22 and port 80 and actually have it just forward those to these container ports based off of the host name. Go ahead and watch my reverse proxy tutorial in the description and that should help you set that up. But that's a bit more complex than what we're gonna go over in this case. And finally, we can just go ahead and hit apply. And next, check everything is correct and we're gonna hit apply again. And it's now gonna go ahead and start up our container. So now if we go into the container tab, we're gonna see that it's running. And we can go into details and log and see that it is starting up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to port 3000 of our web interface. And so we've just gone to port 3000 of the IP address of our Synology. And just like this, this is our Git EA web server. Now for setting up the very first time, just go ahead and click register. And we're more or less gonna keep these default. If you've got your own database server, you can use something other than SQLite 3. But for this, we're just gonna be using SQLite 3. It's a flat file, but we really don't need it unless we're doing a large production database. Now give it a title. And here you could set up a repository path that you mounted via Docker. But that's gonna be out, out of the scope of this tutorial. And so now for SSH server domain, we're actually gonna type in the IP address of this server. That way it's not trying to go to localhost. So if you're using reverse proxy, you're gonna to wanna to set up port 22 to forward to port 22.0, which forwards to port 22 on Docker. It's a bit confusing. But if you are not using a reverse proxy, you need to say that this is port 22.0 because that's what's going to be in the clone path. Now for the git HTTP listen port, it's the same thing. If you've set up a reverse proxy to point port 80 to port 3000 of this server, set this up as port 80. But if you've just set it up regularly without a reverse proxy, leave it as port 3000. For the git base URL, you're going to type in either the IP address of your Synology, or if you've got a reverse proxy and a domain name set up for this, you can use that instead. And so just like that, we're done. There's some additional settings here, but that's out of the scope of this tutorial. And so this is going to take quite a few minutes to set up, but once it's done, we're going to be able to log in to Git EA and start setting up our very first repository. And if you go back into Docker and check out the terminal, we can see all of the different things that it's running right now. And so it's currently setting up that SQLite 3 database for us. And so that's gonna take a little while, but once that's done, we'll be able to go back into that Git EA and actually start running it. All right, and just like that, we are now good. Let's go back in. So it's taken us to the sign-in page, but first we're gonna go ahead and register. And the first registered account is going to be the username. So just go ahead and register. All right, so now that we've created our account, let's go ahead and create our very first Git repository. So you just go to this plus bot, your repository, and you've got to give it a name. We'll call it, and then you can give your description and things like that. You can set up templates, everything. You are going to want to do initialize repository. It just makes it a lot easier unless you are gonna be cloning it from an already existing repository. So now you just click create repository. So now we can go ahead and just clone it by copying this HTTP code and hit copy. Now go into terminal or however you use git. I'm gonna cd into my code folder and I'm gonna do a git clone and just paste that right in. And so now we can cd into it and we can see that there's this readme.md file. So let's just edit that. And just add something in there, normal readme file things. And now just do your regular git add and we'll commit it. and we're going to do a git push. If it's the first time you've done this, 
on this machine, you're going to have to enter your username and your password of Git because it's using HTTP authentication. All right, and so now we just pushed it. So let's go and see what happened here. So it's still the old one, but if we refresh the screen, we'll see right here that we successfully have edited it. Oh, technically I needed to add a, another space there so it would actually give a um, header. But now you can use this as HTTP Git. It's incredibly easy to use and there's a tons of things you can do with it. All right, and so now we need to do some additional configuration because right now anyone can just register. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to go into administrative settings, but we're gonna see something here. If we go to configuration, we're not gonna be able to click any of these boxes. That's because they're actually based off the config files. So the way we're gonna do this is we're actually gonna copy this path right here and we're just gonna go into it through the Docker container. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up, terminal, and we're gonna create a new bash terminal. So we're just going to do a nano and type in that path. Ah, uh, have to use VI. And so this is where all these settings are located. And this is how you can actually change all of the settings. So we're going to scroll down and under service, if you're going to be opening this up, make sure to disable registration and make sure sign on view. So type I to insert. We're going to say true. And we're also going to change this to true as well. Then X to exit. WQ exclamation point. So now those settings should have been updated, but to get them to actually run, we're going to have to restart our Docker container. So exit out of this. Yes. And do an action restart. And one of the great things about Docker is it runs so quickly. And so it's already been rebooted. Now refresh. And if we scroll down, we will see that we have disabled self registration. And so now if we are signed out, we are not going to be able to just click register up here. We're going to have to have a sign in account. And so you can create your own account. And so there are a bunch of other settings you can do here. And that's how you configure them. Unfortunately, you can't use the nice web interface, but it's not too big of a deal considering how quick and lightweight this runs. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you for setting up Git EA on your Docker container and Synology NAS. So go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.